Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Please stand as you're able. We begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering song today is number 689, Praise and Thanksgiving. Number 689, Praise and Thanksgiving.
us to share one with another so that rejoicing with us all others may know your care then will your blessing reach every peace hand where you are reigning no one will hunger your love sustaining showers the land the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with, with you. you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb. God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? 
Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 145, numbers 8 through 9 and 14 to 21. is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The second reading is Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. A reading from Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all God-blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our holy gospel this morning comes from the 14th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, 
They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you all from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In today's first reading, God invites all who are hungry or thirsty to receive food and drink without cost. Jesus feeds the hungry multitude and reveals the abundance of God. At the communion table, we remember all who are hungry or poor in our world today. As we share the bread of life, we are sent forth to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Well, what could be more appropriate on an August Sunday than to read a gospel report about a picnic? For those who are comfortable with doing this, this is the season for packing a basket and heading... <clears throat> and <clears throat> this is the season... <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the season for packing a basket and heading to some isolated spot as you practice social distancing and refreshing yourself in a day of food, fun, and relaxation. Well, that isn't the way this picnic unfolded. Nevertheless, I dare to say that it is the most famous picnic in all of human history, and one of the biggest, too. Jesus and his disciples had just gotten some devastating news. John the Baptist had been beheaded by King Herod. John was the prophet who had prepared the way for Jesus. Now he had been brutally executed. Anybody who preached as fearlessly as John did was always in danger. Still, this was really sad news. So Jesus did what he always did at times of stress. He sought out a private place where he could be alone with God. To ensure privacy, he took a boat to a deserted place. I suspect he was looking for the ancient equivalent of a monastery, a place where no words would be spoken except words with God. But for Jesus, solitude was hard to come by. The crowds liked him too much and needed him too. When they heard that he had left by boat, and when they determined his direction, they left their towns and headed off by foot to meet him. As I said a moment ago, Jesus had gone to a deserted place. That isn't the usual picnic spot. But it works very well when you're planning a picnic with God. Because when you want to meet with God, you want as few distractions as possible. Mind you, beauty helps. That's why we make our houses of worship as attractive as we can. But sometimes we need to strip life down to its bare essentials. I think that's why many prayer chapels have nothing more than a cross or a Bible. We need such isolation now and then. It isn't hard to tell God something in the midst of daily chaos but it's often very hard to listen to God under such circumstances. And in truth and love, probably most of us need to listen to God more than to talk to him. Well, in that deserted place, Jesus was soon surrounded by people. But it was a strange sort of picnic. No ball game, no volleyball, no three-legged races. Instead, sick people crowded around Jesus on every side, waiting for him to speak a word, to touch them, to heal them. 
And he did, right and left, blind and lame, lonely and hopeless. Jesus touched them, and they were made whole. But suddenly it was evening, and time to spread out the picnic food. That's when the disciples got uneasy. They were smart enough to know that a hungry crowd can quickly become an unpleasant crowd. So the disciples said, better send them away so they can buy food for themselves. And Jesus gave a quite surprising answer. They need not go away. You give them something to eat. Well, the disciples had already taken inventory. They had only five loaves and two fish. Really, just enough for a few people. The disciples were about to discover that little is much when God is involved in it. The secret of life is never how much we have, but how much we're ready to cooperate with God. It is not how much talent we have, how much money, or even how many years. The secret is in turning over to our Lord that which we have. Many of us know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey on the radio would say. Jesus organized the crowd, told them to sit down, and he blessed the food and began to break it, and he gave it to the disciples, and they began to distribute it. I wonder if they did so cautiously at first, wondering when it would run out. Then happily, and at last excitedly, I would imagine. They'd never seen anything like it. Some people say that as Jesus began to distribute the five loaves and the two fish, that other people started sharing their food as well. Others say that it's only a symbolic story to remind us of the love of God. Still others say that it was simply a miracle, that all things are possible with God, and that we shouldn't try to box God in, either by our unbelief or by our awkward explanations. And of course, there's still more to the story. When the crowd of over 5,000 was done eating, they collected 12 baskets of scraps, which is to say the busboys got quite a workout that day. Perhaps it's clear to you by now that I believe it was a miracle. True, most of us have never seen such a miracle. To be honest, I'm a little overwhelmed at times when I've gone to a crowded restaurant and I'd see the servers bring hundreds of dishes of food to the many tables. I wonder how they keep everything straight back in the kitchen and how there can possibly be food enough to take care of a Friday evening crowd. No, I've never seen a miracle where five loaves and two fish fed thousands of people. But we've seen enough little miracles to make us believe in big miracles. Indeed, when you're in need of a miracle, no miracle is little. The size of the, the, size of the miracle depends on whose miracle it is, perhaps. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the size of the miracle depends on whose miracle it is, perhaps, and when it happens. When it is a big miracle for me happening in my life, it may seem little more than a coincidence to you. So too with the timing. When something happens at just the right time, it takes on a very special flavor. On later reflection, you may think it wasn't really that great, but maybe that's because the crisis has passed. <clears throat> You've all heard the joke about the man who was driving around the front of a store like Walmart looking for a parking spot, couldn't find one anywhere. His feet were tired and aching, and he was thinking, I really could use a parking spot up front somewhere. And so he prayed, God, help me find a parking spot right up in front, please. And then all of a sudden, someone starts backing out in the front parking spot. And he goes, Lord, it's okay. I got it. Never mind. So let's not spend our time arguing about this picnic miracle, either to question it or to prove it. Let's simply be blessed by it and allow it to encourage our faith. It's not our business today to feed 5,000 in some deserted place. So that particular miracle is not our issue. 
Our job today is to deal with the issues and concerns of this day. And if we do so with grace, that will be miracle enough for one day. We'll get to the 5,000 some tomorrow. And when that happens, we know that God will be with us then. I understand that someone may be thinking just now, life is no picnic, you know. I know, I've heard that phrase too. And I've probably used it at some time. But that's one of the things I like about this, this gospel story. It doesn't start out looking like a picnic. Jesus wants to be alone. And people don't come with brightly colored baskets and freezers of cold drinks. They come with lame people, blind people, hopeless people. And it's not a manicured park with sturdy tables and a play area for the kids. It's a deserted place. It just isn't the way a picnic is supposed to look. And worst of all, almost no one thought to bring any food. What kind of picnic is this when no one brings food? Well, that's where our Lord comes in. Even on a bright August day, I'm talking to some folks for whom life isn't exactly a picnic. I suspect that some can hardly remember when life last seemed like a picnic. For you, it's been a long run of deserted places, of sick bodies, of searches for hope. If so, I want to introduce you today to the one who can take, can take such things and make a picnic. I introduce you to our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we can give our few loaves and fish, yes, and our doubts, fears, and unbelief. I invite you to the kind of picnic that, that only the Lord of the universe can unfold. This is the one who knows the secret of holy multiplication and miracles, small and large. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 515, Break Now the Bread of Life. Number 515, Break Now the Bread of Life.
please stand as you're able and join me in confessing what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rains in places of drought. And protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. We pray especially for the needs of everyone locally and around the world who have been affected by illness, accidents, and natural disasters, and also the needs of those serving in our military, police, and fire departments, and the needs of Pastor Bob Swanson, Bob Aftal, Debal Lennon, Linda Yegley, Diane Winninger, Sherry Fenton, Chad Roscoe, Leroy and Joanne Van Dalen, Von Dalen, Jeff Showers, Joyce Siefker, Jean Lapp, Catherine, Larry McCullough, Gail Kornman, Korneman, Judy Elsliger, Sherry Tacker, Kim Schofstall, Leota M., Frank Bolin, Joyce Bailey, Renato Buturi, Reverend Jackie Means, the residents of Petal Park Apartment Complex, and also the needs of our family and friends on our Trinity prayer list, and those we lift up to you now, either out loud or silently before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and the world as we face uncertainties around the COVID-19 coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Guide us as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your, from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share words of peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. For those watching at home, if you're going to participate in virtual communion, this is a time you'll want to bring out your bread or cracker and also your wine or grape juice and bring it to the table wherever you're sitting watching the program now. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new, cup in my, is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Please be seated. I'll call you up individually. For those of you at home participating in virtual communion, at the end, we'll all take communion at the same time. Elizabeth? body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Andrew?
the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Gail? The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Jody? The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Sarah? The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And now for everyone at home, we take communion together, the body of Christ given for you and for me. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pause briefly for some announcements. As we usually do, we begin by lifting up birthdays and anniversaries. I see that we don't have any anniversaries being celebrated this week that I'm aware of, but we do have some birthdays. We have two. Today, Zach McLennan is celebrating a birthday, and on the 6th this week, Jada Langley is celebrating a birthday as well. So when you have a moment, you might want to contact them on Facebook or send them a text message or... Maybe give them a phone call or send a card wishing them a happy birthday. For other reminders, we just have a few. We're donating school supplies to Frank Franklin Elementary and Sarah Scott Middle School and the 15th and Chestnut Community Center. A donation box can be found in the narthex to do that. Also, Confirmation Sunday has been postponed until we can meet in person sometime in the future. And of course, we'll let everybody know as soon as we reschedule that. And also, altar flower donations are needed for August the 9th and the 23rd. Next Sunday at 10 in the morning, we plan to live stream our worship service as well again. And giving continues to be available to be completed by mail through your bank's online bill pay service or by clicking the link on the website. And once again, I just thank everyone for their continuing generous financial contributions so that we can help feed people through our food voucher pro program that we partner with the Salvation Army uh, to do that. And also for all the different ways that we help through Terre Haute Ministries as well to help people, especially now who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. So many thanks for that. And of course, your generous giving makes it possible for us to provide these ser worship services as well. But with that shared, please stand as you're able. We'll continue with the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us all, now and forever. Amen.
Our sending hymn is number 712, Lord, Lord Whose Love in Humble Service. Number 712, Lord Whose Love in Humble Service. now go in peace to share the great news. Thanks be to God.